Good evening, everyone. We are at the start of our next week's herping, and I've just started a walk here along this wall, and looky what we have here. That is a many-banded crate. A little bit bright, I know, but um, yeah, kind of a cool start. We're not going to mess with him too much. He's going to probably head off in there anyways, but let's uh, keep walking, and uh, we'll see if he doesn't come out for the pass back, but good start. It's a bit cooler than I'd like, but it rained today, so that's going to be helpful, and we're going to give it a good shot tonight, so we'll check back in with you either on the way out if we haven't found anything to have another look at our crate friend or hopefully with something else. All right, guys, we've lucked out. It's uh, been a little bit of a slower night uh, snake-wise than I would have liked, but the rain's picked up a bit, so that's not entirely unusual in those conditions. But persistency does pay off with a new species for the vlog. This is a golden kukri snake, genus Oligodon, species Cinereus. These are not a very common species in Hong Kong, or I shouldn't say that. They're a, a largely fossorial species, so they're not very commonly encountered. Uh, but this time of year, they're uh, a little bit more common out and about. Um, and they're a super interesting little snake. Now, there's two species in the Oligodon genus in Hong Kong. One is the Taiwan Kukri, which is a bit more browny, yellowy color. And then there's this one, the Golden Kukri. And they're morphologically somewhat similar. They have these little shovel heads and um, kind of stockier bodies and uh, pointed little tails. And like most Kukris in the genus, I think maybe all, they also have a very sharp rear tooth that the Taiwan kukri snakes use for cutting into eggs. Um, but the golden kukri doesn't seem to use as much, and, and the tooth may not even be anywhere near as big, relatively speaking. Um, and it's, it's documented that these are actually largely insectivorous snakes. Uh, so they'll eat spiders and crickets and things like that. So actually pretty, pretty interesting species. And unlike their larger cousins, the Taiwan kukri, these are also relatively reluctant to bite. And I don't recommend ever handling a kukri because they can give you a pretty good slash, even to the extent you might have to go for stitches. But these guys are not quite as quick to do it. So I can give you a quick little view of the ventrals here, unlike their um, cousins, the Taiwan kukri. They have uh, uniform colored ventrals. The Taiwan kukris can have a pink colored belly. Let me fix the lighting here a little bit. There he goes. Um, but you can see there they have a, a, a pretty tiny little head that's uh, pretty good for foraging. And yeah, they're, they're just a really interesting little snake. And again, not one that commonly encountered. So pretty happy we stuck with it. And let's see going under? Yeah, he wants to get under the leaf litter. Um, yeah, I'm going to try and get some photos of this guy because he's uh, really cool. That's an interesting little defensive behavior, est right up. Um, yeah, we'll get some pictures and maybe share some here and maybe I'll link some species info as well, but really great end to the night. All right, buddy. All right. There we go. Try and get a view of his head here. Okay. There we go. That's a little better. All right. Well, we'll let this guy get on with his evening after the photos and probably get back with you guys again tomorrow night. Good evening, folks. It's been a long, unproductive week, but fortunately, we've got a decent find here. 
the same weep hole we were earlier this week with a little many banded crate. Um, I'm on a bit of a busy road here just like last time so I'm just gonna leave this guy alone and keep moving probably the same one anyways but yeah it's been a slow week so uh, struck out pretty much every night so this will be one of the last nights of the week and we'll see if we can't come up with a few more check back in if we do well we haven't been able to come up with any other snakes um, it's been real cold this week so I guess it's understandable but I did manage to find this pretty cool long-legged centipede they're pretty big guys when they're fully grown like this one um, and they're really really fast try and give you a sense of scale though he may take off or go at me if I do but there you go pretty chunky guys really really long legs like I said really fast um, and it's the most interesting thing we found since that many banded crate so we may be ending this week the way we started it with that same crate um, we might have one more day that I can slip into this uh, video so we'll give that a shot and I've got a, a short walk to finish here so there's still a chance for something tonight but I imagine this is probably gonna close us out so if not you'll see me in a second if so you'll see me tomorrow all right folks we're out for what's gonna be our last night of herping this week and we've come across our first snake here which is a pretty little Anderson stream snake and this one's kind of cool it's got some um, pretty detailed black flecking on it I think this is a uh, one of the more common snakes we've seen at the you know end of last year's season start of this year's season so I won't spend too much time and I, I won't handle it or bother it um, but yeah it was just swimming along in this little stream it's a decent size there's the tail yeah really cool one. it's flecked all along its body with little black flecks um, one of the more ornate ones I've seen so far for sure and this one has its head up, which is always very fun. You can see there, tongue actively flicking. Um, not really sure what all this means. Maybe it's looking for a mate, maybe it's looking for food, but it's uh, super active right now. It's the time of night where we'd expect that. Really cool to see the head up and the tongue flick. Just a very cool snake to find. All right, we'll see if we can go find some others. All right, everyone, we've got our second and what may end up being our last snake of the evening. Um, we've got a, a common wolf snake here. I can't remember if we've had one of these on the vlog yet or not. Um, I can't remember one, so maybe this is a new species for the vlog, so maybe I'll give it a quick intro. This is one of three species of wolf snake in Hong Kong. This is the common. We also have the banded, which is quite rare. And there's also the Futsing's wolf snake. Um, small, this is a full grown specimen. You can see here, maybe with my hand, they're actually not very big at all. And they're kind of interesting. They've got a maroon colored body and they have this uh, greenish yellow modeling that runs the length of the body. A little bit of a collaring at the back of the head with that yellow coloration and like the other wolf snakes but on a smaller scale they have these small wedge-shaped heads which is uh, not uncommon on a lot of these uh, sub fossorial species like this a really nice uh, pearlescent uh, ventral scales as well which is pretty neat and as their name indicates this is a pretty common species to find in Hong Kong um, but it's been a it's been a bit of a rough week for finding snakes so pretty happy we came across this guy and who knows, we've got a, a little bit of a walk out, just a, a few hundred meters or so, maybe a little bit less than a kilometer. So I don't expect any more. Happy to find this guy, and he may close us out, but we'll pop back in and show you guys if we find anything else. All right, folks, we have another common wolf snake. Uh, looks very similar to the last one, but further up the trail, so definitely a different one. Um, we've just talked about these guys, so I won't 
rehash what we've already said, but yeah, great little find. Maybe I'll see if um, I can show you the ventrals on these guys without getting bit or musked on. There you go. Those pearlescent semi-transparent ventrals. All right, go up the go up there, go up there. So yeah, great little snakes. <laughs> He's ready to be on his way. We'll leave him alone and not bother him anymore. But yeah, another great find. Let's see what else we can get. All right, folks, we've got our first venomous snake for the evening. This is the common but always beautiful bamboo pit viper. I think this was the first snake species we had on the vlog when we started. And it's the time of year where they're starting to come out again. So, great find. This is a male. You can tell because they have the characteristic white stripe above the lip there. And the stripe also kind of goes down the side of the body the whole way. It's a bit faded on this one, but you can still kind of make it out here um, on the side. And like all bamboo pit vipers, they have a pretty distinct orange colored tail there. And yeah, very uh, pretty little snakes, quite common to find. Um, but since we've had such a uh, slow week, I'm pretty happy that we actually bumped into this guy. Actually, my uh, my buddy I'm walking with spotted this one, so um, he's turning into my lucky charm tonight. We'll see if we can maybe grab a few more on the way out. We're having a, a strong close here. Evening, everyone. We're out for our next video, and I'm at a new location with my buddy Rob, and it's a, a wetland habitat, but the first snake we found, and ironically found by flipping a log, is this common blind snake. So these have been featured on the video before. I won't talk too much about them, but they're our smallest species of snake. They're um, fossorial snakes, they eat ant larvae, things like that. But we're going to put him back under his log and keep going because we're only a couple minutes into our walk. But it's uh, quite cool and dry, so we're pretty happy we found anything. We weren't, we weren't planning on uh, getting any video tonight. But great start. We'll keep at it and pop back on if we find anything else here. All right, everybody, in quick sh uh, short order... We managed to stumble across this turtle after that blind snake. And my buddy and I are, are generally familiar with the species here in Hong Kong, but we're not local turtle specialists, so not entirely sure how common or rare this species might be. We're pretty sure it is a Chinese striped terrapin. Um, and from some of the information we looked up really quickly, it says it's quite rare, but the information may not be that reliable. So we've sent some messages out to ask around to our herping buddies and scientist buddies to see if we can better ascertain whether this is a super rare encounter or a relatively common encounter. Either way, we're going to do some quick photos and video just to make sure we document it. And then we'll go ahead and let this one on its way. Pretty sure it's a female, actually, but... Um, you can see here a little bit, some of the uh, stripe pattern on the head, though she's not coming out. She's a pretty big, robust turtle. Um, I assume this is full grown, but we'll learn more in a little bit. So if she comes back out before we let her go, I will make sure we film that so you can see the body a little bit better. And if we get any good shots, I'll try and include those as well. All right. Check back in in a minute. 